it's freaking crazy. And when it comes down to these builds for the modular frames, the reinforced steel and everything else, this is when you really need to start paying attention to numbers and efficiency. And in the dead of night, we wait for daytime to come. Why? Because we can't see anything. It's too damn dark. What is going on, gaming nerds? Welcome back to Midnight Gaming with Mystic Nightmare. Thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out. Hopefully you guys are having an amazing day. I'm having a pretty decent day. It is midnight. Yet again and yet again, we are back on Satisfactory. Now, today we are going to be automating three things. We're going to be automating the module frames. We are going to be automating the rotors. And we're going to be automating the reinforced iron plates. Now, this is a pretty big build this is where the game gets very deep and just the rabbit hole of crafting goes very deep with this so it's going to be it's going to be pretty intense uh before we do that however we need to scan or we need to an, an, an analysis machine uh the green power slug because those will actually open up the overclockers and the overclockers are great because it allows you to overclock machines now i told you in the last episode that i pre-built an area to be able to do this and i have now just as a heads up i'm first going to build it as an mk1 built meaning all the belts and everything are going to be mk1 all the machinery is going to be mk1 and the reason i'm doing that is to kind of show you how slow everything is and then we're going to upgrade everything to mk2 except for the mk1 uh miners now when i build this i'm actually going to build it in an mk2 style but it's going to be running the mk1 um, conveyor belts and everything else like that i've already put down our assemblers which are right here and as you can see we need um Modular frames, rotors, and cables. I just made those all by hand. And then we went ahead and put down three of them. And like I said, this is going to be an MK1 belts and stuff like that. It's going to be super slow because technically it's in an MK2 style with an MK1 belting and everything else. However, whenever we get the MK2 miners, we're going to upgrade those. And as soon as we do, it's going to take advantage. This whole setup is going to take advantage of that. And it's really going to boost our production. I'm going to try to make it as efficient as I possibly can. There's probably better ways to do it. I'm not saying this is the only way. This is just the way that I've decided to do it. As you can see, I've put out four uh, uh, smelting machines, smitheries, smelteries, whatever you want to call it, on this node and four on this node. Now, the cool thing about this setup is I'm actually going to, take, to connect both of these setups by one conveyor belt and it's going to run into this um, this line right here. And like I said before, we went ahead and put out the assemblers already. The reason I connected these two assemblers is because this assembler is going to be doing modular frames and it needs reinforced iron plate. This one is actually going to be doing the reinforced iron plates. Now, if you guys didn't know, reinforced iron plates take forever to actually craft when you automate them. It's actually faster to do it by hand, to be completely honest with you. But we're gonna start out by doing that just to show you guys how we're gonna set everything up. I've already got these running to storage units over here. And like I said, these ones are gonna be doing rotors over here. So we've got these set up to where I think they're gonna actually need to be. Now, let's get started. Actually, before I do, let me show you how I've split this up. Um, what I've done is I've turned our MK1s 90 degrees to the right so I could have a little bit more space over here. Then I've run it into a splitter. Now this belt can actually hold 60 ore per minute, okay? So when you split it into three different different ways, it goes 20, 40, 60. So 20 on this belt, 20 on this belt, and 20 on this belt. Now this belt runs into another splitter which splits it two more times, meaning that this belt's gonna have 10 product per minute, and this one's gonna have 10 product per minute. Now if you do this, one of my suggestions is, is make sure that you make, you make a lower carrying belt with a lower carrying quality on a line of automation where it takes a long time to craft whatever you're crafting. So on this one, it's going to be iron rods because iron rods take forever and it, it'll allow the ore to actually back up and to get more ore into your smith uh, before 
before the iron rods basically crafted if that makes any sense i've done the exact same thing with this over here however with this one um well actually i've just done the basic i've made sure that one of this line right here is going to be iron uh, iron plates it's going to be on a main line it's going to get a full 20 um as it's as it's crafting because the iron plates craft very fast so it needs a lot more ore per minute so i've gone ahead and done the exact same thing it splits into three and then it splits into another splitter and then these two over here are going to be the lower uh carrying belt so let's go ahead and get started we're going to go ahead and start with our constructors and we're going to put constructors straight across and we're going to need four on each to start out with and then we're actually going to get a little bit higher than that so we're going to go one there and we're going to go why is okay i guess i'm actually when i'm when i'm traversing to the side i'm actually moving forward a little bit i was wondering why they weren't they weren't placing correctly okay uh this is going to be a very compact build as well so pa putting power up is going to be a royal pain in the butt so all four of these are actually going to be set up to make rods so rods here rods here rods here and then rods over here these two over here need another constructor because this is actually going to have screws built and we're going to have two constructors for for screws basically because of how much how many screws this assembler needs per minute okay so we're going to go ahead and do that then what we're going to go ahead and do is uh i don't remember oh yeah we we're going to put a conveyor splitter right here we're gonna go ahead and turn it so it'll go it'll release to the right anytime now why are you not I want it to the right the reason they're not pacing correctly is because I don't need a splitter I need a freaking merger because I'm an idiot that's what it is uh, let's see all right let's go with here a merger that's what we needed day go here and we're gonna go here good so that's gonna mer merge it's gonna merge your screws together so this one's gonna do screws and this one's gonna do screws and then we're gonna go ahead and place this here and that's gonna go straight into there excellent now what we're gonna do over here is this is going to be interesting. I'm going to split this one off over into here, but I'm also going to merge this one with, with with this one. So we're going to need another conveyor merger. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the conveyor merger to go out. I believe that's it. We're going to go ahead and back it up. We'll put it right there. Okay, and then we're going to take a splitter. And we're going to go like this. We're going to line that up, and it's going to split. Okay, that should be right. So this one... Is going to come into here this one is going to merge into here and then this one is going to go over here because I believe that's what we need for yep that's gonna be our iron rods and then this one is actually gonna come out and I'm just gonna put it out just for reference and I'm gonna connect it with this one over here okay so this is basically it when it comes down to uh, the 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 rotors it's fairly simple it's fairly easy i'm going to set up the power real quick so i can make it nice and neat hopefully and then we're going to go ahead and start it up and we're going to have a look at it all right i think i've got all the power set up and ready to go for right now anyway so we just need to connect it and we need to let everything start up and we're going to connect it by here uh is that a four by four yep it sure is uh so i need to connect it somewhere else is that is that a four by four? Okay. All right, everything should be starting up and running. Is this starting up and running? This is starting up and running. We got stuff coming in here. Anytime now. Is it like backwards? There we go. Okay. Now, like I said before, 60, 60 product per minute. Okay, and we're gonna upgrade everything to MK2 after we do this. So we're gonna let this go in here. This one's gonna split up into three, and then that one's gonna split up, and you'll notice that these two belts are taking a lot less material. For some reason, this one's clogging up. I don't understand why. It says no power, but I'm pretty sure I had power on it. 
guess not. Okay, let's make sure everything's coming through over here over okay. Make sure everything's coming through here okay. We've got our screws that are being or our our rods that are being made. Yippee ki yay. And then we come over here. We got screws that are being made. If you guys can see, there we go. Now that one's being pretty slow when it comes down to rods being in there, but that's okay. Uh, because I think this is actually going to be backed up a little bit. Nope. I didn't do that right. This is supposed to go here. There we go. Now we got a lot more rods coming in. No wonder that looks so funky. Now, as you see, this is going to be split up into here, and this is going to come over into this side. So as of right now, when it comes down to it, look at... Uh, no power. That's my biggest problem is I get I think I'm done and then everything is no power no power So you see how the screws are coming in at what it okay? Let me explain kind of the numbers for you This is not how much it's getting. It's how much it's required This is the same thing. So it's requiring hundred and thirty two per minute when it comes to screws This is how much it can make which is six percent or six per minute this means that it's running at a hundred a a hundred percent efficiency meaning it can make six per minute however as stuff starts being crafted after it's crafted it starts dropping as you can see this is dropping really really bad and it's because of our screw production why well here's the thing these screws this one here in this machine is making 90 per minute. Well, it can make 90 per, per minute, but it's not. It's making 67% of 90, okay? This one over here can make 90%. It's the same thing, 67%. So it's only doing 65% of what it can actually make. So what I've done is by putting those two together, we should be able to get around... Uh, I think over 132. The problem is, is you've got only 60 coming out of this belt and only 60 coming out of this belt. You put it together and this belt, no matter what, can only hold 60 at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to start using the MK2s. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and you just hit 8 on an existing one. And we're going to move that in there. Now check this out. Boom. Now we got a whole bunch more coming in. And now once it crafts and it gets done crafting as you can see we've got less of a wait time and less of a wait between crafts as it crafts it should go up from the the 55 percent hopefully if I'm right okay so 59 58 so it didn't go that much it didn't go up that much okay now this one for the for the iron rods it requires 18 per minute all right this constructor over here only makes them at 15 per minute even at 100 percent efficiency so what i've done is i've taken this one which is a 15 i've taken this one which is also a 15 and i've cut i've cut it in half so this makes 15 and as it comes out it splits into 7.5 7.5 7 plus 15 is 22. so this belt is actually carrying 22 at a time so we've got the 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 required 18 per minute that's why it's backing up right here and over here, as you can see, this one looks like it's actually backing up a little bit too, finally, and it's raised up to 68% efficiency. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to redo all of our belts into MK2s so it gets, basically everything gets to where it needs to get faster, okay? Now, I can't really increase the efficiency of everything until I get overclockers on, and I can't re, you know, uh, increase the 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 productivity I should say of each one but this is definitely going to help increase our efficiency by how quickly things get to each machine okay so as you can see I've replaced every single belt on this entire setup with mk2s everything's running super fast when it comes down to how quickly it's getting to each machine and this thing is just kicking out uh, or like crazy all these machines are running at a hundred percent which means they're doing full productivity so this one's actually making 15 per minute this one's actually making 15 per minute and most importantly our screws are now up to a hundred percent uh where is it our screws are up to a hundred percent efficiency meaning they're doing 90 per minute which means that this belt that these two machines are kicking out 180 per minute 
the only thing that's kind of holding it back is the belt because the belt actually on the mk2s the belt only does well it does 120 so it's not holding it back too much but we're only able to kick out 120 because no matter how many lines you have into this this belt can only hold 120 per minute so we're not making the max when it comes down to this right here but look how quickly this is actually crafting See, it starts immediately. Instead of waiting any time to fill up these screws, there is a little bit of a wait every like five or six rotors, but for the most part, we're running at a 90% efficiency just by turning everything up to the MK2s. So that's kind of what it can do for you, and it's completely awesome. Now, as far as screws are concerned, I highly suggest always, always crafting with two constructors doing your screws. With the rods, you only need one constructor if you're doing construct uh, if you're doing screws on the same run so now it's time to go ahead we've got our rotors going now it's time to do reinforced plates as well as uh, these bad boys which is modular frames and as you can see we need iron rods this first one right here is going to be our iron rod setup where are we production constructor right here turn it to the right direction here then we need to go here. Another four constructors. The far right constructor will be doing iron plates and all three of the other ones will be doing iron rods. The same thing as the oops, the same thing as the other setup, we're going to have two of them doing screws. Those two that are doing screws are these two constructors in the middle. Okay, so let's go ahead and back it up, back it up, back that thing up, baby, uh, right here. Good, everything looks good. Okay, so this one over here is going to be kicking out iron rods. So we're going to go ahead and pop that with the regular MK1. We're going to pop that into there. That will finish basically everything we need for modular frames. Okay, but we need the reinforced plate from over here so now we have to build that up that's not really that hard to do we, we take the plates we come out from the plates and we go ahead and connect the plates there's half of it done right there now we need to do the screws now the problem with the screws is first of all i didn't put this constructor in the right spot so i'm gonna have to go ahead and do that and we're gonna have to go ahead and um put them close together and, and merge together with a merging thingamajigger, which is the conveyor merger. Now this is really close to this assembler. I'm gonna try and get it to set up correctly so they connect. It's probably gonna take me a minute. Uh, let's see, you go there, you go there. I want one in the sides. I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to get fairly close to this right here. Hopefully this will work. I have a feeling this other side will not. Oh, it did. It, it, uh, 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 oh, we rock. We rock. Absolutely. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're basically done at this point. Um, these need screws. This takes screws. Okay. And then these two, we did the iron rods and everything on, on this, right? Okay. So now I'm going to finish connecting all the machines with the belts and I'm going to set up the power. We'll be right back. All right, as you can see, the power is up and running. By the way, the power on this setup sucked to try and figure out. I'm gonna have to take a lot of time and just figure out how I can make it a little bit easier with a lot less power, uh, power lines. Okay, so everything's running and everything should be running at, well, at least with the Smithies, it should be running uh, smelters at 100%. Iron plates are 100%, 100% on that iron rod yep we're at 100 on the iron rods we're at 72 percent on this iron rod i'm not sure exactly why it might be because we're at 65 on this one it might be because these ones are offshoots you see how it's not getting as much coal it's probably that's what's bringing down the um the efficiency on this one so with this one uh, we're doing 67% on the screws on that and this one is a hundred percent on the screws on that one And that's because this line is on a conveyor belt that gives 20 coal per Okay, you see what I'm saying what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm, in, I'm making this an mk1 build until we get the mk2 miners That's why it is an mk2 build 
it's an but it's done in mk1 materials basically so as you can see there is one thing i forgot to do on camera and i told you guys that i was going to connect these two lines i've taken these rods here and i've put them up into our assembler there and i've taken that rod um splitter and i've put it to this merger right here this is getting easily over well i shouldn't say it's enough i think this one actually only gets what is this one this one gets 15 and then because that split i think it's only 22 so this belt only carries 22 and it, this requires, for the, the modular frames, it requires 24. However, it's backed up because of the reinforced iron plates. The reinforced iron plates suck when it comes down to crafting them. Check this out. We have to wait for the screws. On top of that, when we actually get the screws, watch how slow this actually crafts. Look how slow that crafts. So the reinforced iron plates are our bottleneck, basically. Um, we need to get that sped up as quickly as possible. 53% efficiency, which completely sucks. Um, hopefully, we can actually, by changing all of our all of our stuff to MK2, hopefully we can get a little bit of an increase on this. Come on. Okay, so there's that. Does this one need to be done? Usually you can tell by the speed, but I'm not really watching. This one needs to be done. We'll increase the speed of the plates getting in there. And then all we need to do is do the back part here. And it'd probably be a good idea if we do it right by the, um, the coal as well. Increase this one. Quickly change all these to MK2. These are the important ones back here. Is is the coal? Get the coal faster to this to the the refineries, and we're good to go. Oh, I need freaking iron plates. Are you kidding me? Seriously, I had two hundred freaking iron plates. You got to be kidding me. And I <laughs> and I this thing isn't gonna be making them fast enough. Okay, we're done making screws. I just made a little crafting bench right there so we can make, uh, not screws, but reinforced plates. Let's go back and finish upgrading these to MK2s. I like upgrading to MK2s because I like seeing all of the coal and everything else just take off like a bat out of hell when I do it. See how fast it is? It's so cool. I love watching that. It's really neat. Okay, I think we've got everything upgraded to MK2. We got everything speeding into the next next machine which is totally awesome now these which we were having a problem with before are now up to a hundred percent because of just putting those mk2 belts on there and getting getting stuff fast enough to the next machine but as you can see when we get to the front we have less of a wait time we've got screws that are actually already building up and watch okay we're at a hundred percent reinforced iron plates so we've gone from 58 which is what we were at before or 53 and we've gone up to 100 percent just by in putting everything into mk2 belts now i see people going through and and making a select few mk2 belts but they're like they don't do all of it i think you should just do all of it yes i understand sometimes there's no need for it but for the most part when you're trying to do reinforced plates and you're trying to do you know the the modular thingamajig or what do they call the modular frames everything's got to be in mk2 because that's the only way you're getting it up to 100 percent even though we're at 100 percent on that they're still slow as molasses i mean look at this Look how slow they are. So this thing isn't going to come anywhere near 100%. It's only at 44. The only way we're going to be able to get this up is we're doing overclockers. And that's why we went ahead and did that green booger slug is to get overclockers so we can start overclocking all of these machines all at once just so we can overclock this machine so this machine will actually get up to 100% efficiency. It's freaking crazy. And when it comes down to these builds for the modular frames, the reinforced steel and everything else, this is when you really need to start paying attention to numbers and efficiency. Up until now, you really didn't have to do that very much. But we've got 100% efficiency, over, oh, 90% efficiency over here. We've got a bunch of rotors being made. As you can see, I've put a bunch of extra ones in there. 
that's not all we've made in this episode. I'm just telling you right now, I've threw, thrown a couple extra in there. And then we've got some modular frames. As you can see, this is gonna take forever. So until we're able to get all of this stuff overclocked, there's not really any reason to really be pushing trying to get 100% and, and to move machines around and everything else because I think this is one of the most efficient builds you can do. I've thought about this a lot. I've tried a couple of different things, um, but the most one of the most important things that I found out is when you're splitting your conveyor belt up like this, you need to make sure the slower crafting materials such as iron rod is on one of the belts that has the least amount of ore. That way it takes a while for the iron rods to craft um, and stuff can actually catch up. The ore can catch up when it comes down to, you know, having it smithed and and on the being on the conveyor. And then when it comes down to super fast crafts like the plates, uh, have it have the fast ones on the plates pretty cool i think it's pretty awesome there's also one other thing i want to show you that i've done uh off camera i'm going to go ahead and keep these storages right here uh and let it run for a little while but that's our basic huge build i mean that is a big build this is when you start going down the rabbit hole of crafting and automation and stuff and it's a lot of fun but it can be frustrating if you can't really get the result that you're looking for so i have actually if you remember in the last episode we did the power stuff i've actually built a power pad jump course that gets us up to our power up top now for us to actually do that build that we just did we would have been fine with 200 megawatts of power which is what we left at in the last episode i've actually doubled our power up here uh, and I wanted to show you that real quick just as the last before we end the episode so there is our way up and this is the way we go up here up here got to control it a little bit goes up here push back whoops goes up here bada boom bada bang we are up at our power as you can see i have i have doubled our power uh it, we were at 200 before now we're at 450. so what i've done let me show you what i've done and this has worked out a lot better uh first things first i have taken off one of our conveyor belts of coal and i have put it down along the top of a stack of conveyor belt stair thingy majiggers all the way to that storage way down there just to collect storage because i know we're going to be needing to make steel later on and you need i believe iron and uh, coal to make steel so i've pulled one of the conveyor belt lines off completely okay then what I've done is I've gone ahead and moved our recycler conveyor up to a second level. And I've put it all down the center over the top of each other. And I'm keeping this recycler just to make sure that I can see how much coal is being actually recycled and isn't being used when it goes down the line over here. On top of that, I have put three brand new coal generators over here as you can see one two three and down at the butt end of it i've put in i've put in i've placed two more generators down here for a total of five more generators than we have before and a total of nine generators in total and all i did was i used the splitters that we already had in our previous coal generators to power these ones and I just put them straight across from it. I might actually end up moving this platform and everything back and over so I can add a couple more. But right now we're sitting at 450 freaking power and it is amazing. It's holding strong. All of our automations only taken 162 megawatts. Um, so yeah, we're, we're doing really, really good on power and this has worked out really well. It's very compact and it puts out a lot of freaking power and as you can see and it's all the cool thing is, is it's all on one conveyor it's all on one conveyor that's an mk1 that's just putting coal through you know one conveyor and it's it's doing a great job filling all nine of these it's awesome i absolutely love it and then this one 
is full of freaking coal right here. Now to get down, this is the fun part. Ba boom Geronimo, baby! I didn't realize, but when you get to the bottom, you can actually run faster. And then you come over here to get down, and dun 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 dun! You have to have faith in yourself that you put it in the right spot, and you jumped off the right spot for it to actually work properly. So that is our new way up. That is our new power. That is our automated rotors, modular frames, and reinforced plates. I'm thinking about maybe finding another coal area just to make reinforced plates as quickly as I can. Uh, up until now, I'm just going to make them by hand because it takes so long to make them. Uh, and I believe we're done on our green power slug over here. Yes. The crystals on this slug can be harvested and converted into a power shard that functions with current fixit technology. Several buildings would be capable of performing over 100% capacity if infused. The derived blueprint is now accessible in Hub Tier 1. Super excited. Check that out. We can actually we can open that right now. That's overclocking. So this power shard will allow us to overclock all those all of those machines we just put on you know what we might as well just do it now can we do it now do we have enough enough of the jingle stuff uh, boom we just overlocked overlocked overclocking we just unlocked overclocking if you like the video hit the like button if you didn't don't hit it just make sure no matter what you do subscribe thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out i really appreciate it hopefully you guys enjoyed the build take care have a good one and bye bye